Hey everyone, and this is the final bit of content that you need for Unit 4 Outcome 2. So this will focus on rational drug design, then generally, generally look at antibiotics and the concept of antibiotic resistance, and we'll very, very briefly touch about antiviral drugs today as well. So it's all medicine-based drugs, just a few things um, based around that. So the first thing we're looking at is the concept of rationally designed drugs, which is a new step in drug manufacture. So basically, with technology advancing, we can now design uh, medicinal drugs that are based on the properties of the pathogen that they are treating. So this is rational drug design, using the biology of the pathogen that we're treating um, to actually design the drug to treat it. Um, and that may often rely on computer modeling to make a, a molecule that is complementary to the pathogen or complementary to an enzyme produced by the pathogen. So I've got an example here. Let's say that we've used our um, computer programs and we found out that an enzyme produced by a pathogen has got a shape like this. And maybe this um, molecule that's been made by the pathogen may help it to enable a cell or it may be a toxin that causes you to be ill whatever, but we know it's, um, it's got this shape and we know that this molecule is part of how the pathogen functions to make us unwell. We would make a drug that has a complementary shape to this pathogen or, or this part of the pathogen, okay? So the drug would then bind with the active site of that enzyme and therefore deactivate it from working, okay? That's the idea of rational drug design. We've studied the enzyme made by the pathogen We've made something with a complementary shape to it, so that will stop the enzyme from functioning in its normal way. So that is the concept of rational drug design. There is a specific example of a, a rational drug design for you to be aware of, and that is the drug Relenza. Okay? So Relenza um, is a rationally dr designed drug that's used to treat the influenza virus, more commonly known as the flu virus. And the way that it does that is that flu viruses use a protein called neuraminidase to allow them to enter their host cell. So Relenza is complementary to the neuraminidase, so can bind to it and therefore deactivate it, meaning it's much harder for the flu viruses to enter your cells, meaning they can't reproduce and go on to keep on making you ill. So this Relenza, which is designed to bind with the neuraminidase from the influenza virus, has been rationally um, designed by studying the properties of that enzyme and being made to be complementary to it. So just generally speaking about, um, and, uh, about drugs now, so looking at antibiotics. So um, antibiotics can be rationally designed or they can be very simple um, old fashioned drugs as well. This is just generally talking about antibiotics. So these are, um, medicines that are used to treat bacterial infections. They do not work on viruses, so antibiotics are for bacterial infections only. And they can um, treat, uh, treat bacterial infections in a number of ways. So they may um, inhibit or lyse, which means like burst, the cell wall of a bacteria, um, which kills it. Um, they could also damage the cell membrane of the bacteria. Hopefully you remember from Unit 3, Outcome 1, the um, cell membrane controls what enters and leaves a cell. So if that's been damaged, they'll be letting the bacteria will be letting in stuff they don't want to and letting out stuff they don't want to, which will kill them as well. They may also um, prevent uh, proteins being made that they need to function, or they may prevent DNA or RNA being synthesized or replicated. So that's how antibiotics work to kill um, bacteria. We do need to be aware of the concept of antibiotic resistance as well. So we are finding more and more today that um, lots of, of antibiotics are becoming resistant. Um, sorry, lots of pathogens, lots of bacteria are becoming resistant to their antibiotics. So the way this happens is we get um, natural, um, we get naturally occurring mutations happen. So here in this diagram, all of the blue dots represent bacterial colony that is vulnerable to a antibiotic, but this pink purple one represents one that's naturally mutated a resistance to the antibiotic. So maybe just due to a random gene mutation, it happens to make a protein that can deactivate the antibiotic, something like that. 
So that's just naturally happened. So when the um, bacteria are treated with antibiotics, all of the blue ones that I've said don't have the resistance are killed out, and only the ones that have the resistance remain. But obviously bacteria grow and divide pretty quickly, so in not too long, lots and lots of bacteria that have all inherited that resistance will be present, okay? And to make matters even worse, they can even pass on their resistance to non-resistance bacteria as well. So this is a huge issue um, at the moment in science, the idea of antibiotic resistance. So, you know, like we say, bacteria naturally um, may mutate resistance to antibiotics, but then when antibiotics are overused, that can result in um, resistance strains becoming more and more common. There's a fantastic video by Kurz Kassaj on the concept of antibiotic resistance. I will link that to you so you can watch that as well, which goes into it in a bit more depth. Um, finally, just be aware that uh, antiviral drugs do exist as well. So drugs that can be used to treat um, virus diseases. So they are different to antibiotics that are used for bacteria. Um, you don't need to know a huge amount of detail about them, but there is an overview of them in the slides going into a bit more information about what they do. But they typically work to either stop viruses from getting into cells, because that's how viruses work, they get inside your cells, or they may work to um, stop viruses replicating DNA or RNA. They're a bit, um, there's not too much to know about them, but do make sure you read up on them just so you've got the basic knowledge you need. Okay, that is all, and yeah, that's the end of Unit 4 Outcome 2.